Downtown Isfahan should seem a lot busier at this time of year. The city counts as one of the most beautiful in the Near East, but the tourists are missing, and so are foreign investors. Iran is now left in this crisis on its own. People are used to tough times, but the situation is more precarious than ever. Not far from these cultural treasures is located one of the most important nuclear centers, a potential target of attack. That too makes the situation trickier. People on the street may have had enough of their president's provocative politics, but when it comes to the nuclear issue, they support their unpopular regime. The West will not have the guts to attack us. That's what I think. Also, when foreign countries are against us, we stand behind our president. Our enemies should take a look at our cemeteries, and then they would see that we are ready to fight to the bitter end. The conflict surrounding nuclear power is the only bond between the president and the people. 27 years after the Khomeini revolution, this theocratic and police-dominated state is stuck in a deep economic and social crisis. The middle classes are dwindling, and signs of poverty can be found everywhere. There are many hints that the Islamists around Ahmadinejad are not afraid of confronting the USA, a trader in Isfahan Bazaar tells us, in a surprisingly open manner. The atmosphere is pessimistic. The present is looking very dark, and the future even more. We suffer from high unemployment, everything grows more expensive every day. Young people want to marry, but they have no money and can barely feed a family. They can't even buy their own flat. If my son wants to buy this shop, it would be impossible because he wouldn't get credit. More and more young people turn to drugs. The situation is really dreary. We didn't make the revolution to get democracy, Ahmadinejad declared shortly after his election as president. It was already predictable then that he would be tempted to turn the clock back to Khomeini's time. Since then, the president has enjoyed his time as a troublemaker. Ahmadinejad sees himself as the spearhead of a second Islamic revolution in Iran. He may not be reputed to be the most cultured or competent politician, but he states his opinions openly. However, Promises to redistribute oil profits among the poor haven't been fulfilled, and corruption is as rife as ever. It is here, in the south of Tehran, that the greatest hopes have rested on his election, and with good reasons. As their mayor, he always gave the poor his attention, and he championed social justice. Ahmadinejad was more popular than any other mayor before him. 70% have voted for him, and for many it was an emotional decision that they regret today. He is not an actor. He means what he says, many inhabitants of the city tell us, but he led us into a dead end. By now, Ahmadinejad has provided material for many jokes. Some make fun of his appearance, others of his lack of culture. Yet many have long lost their sense of humor. <laughs> We have reached the bottom economically. I sell fish because my fruit and vegetable shop is bankrupt. It's the same for everyone around here. At the beginning of the revolution, everything was fine. Even under Rashani, we still had money in our pockets. But now, disaster. Interviewees are very cautious when criticizing their president. Wherever foreign journalists show up, spies are there too. However, an increasing number of Iranians are not ready to put up with this anymore.
In fact, they never get the chance to have fun, except maybe at the restaurant or in the cinema. There are no clubs, no Western culture. We can never find an outlet for our energy, and many young people turn to drugs to forget their frustration. It's a huge problem. Ahmadinejad made us so many promises. So far, he has kept none. As could be expected, the opinion of those close to the controversial president himself is radically different. We visited Ahmadinejad's doctor. Ahmed Darhosh has known him since youth. This fact might explain a tendency to admire the politician. We see President Ahmadinejad as a second Mahatma Gandhi. He has to be given the time to carry out his mission. He is an unsophisticated, peace-loving man. Can you detect anything about him that would contradict his love of peace? Ahmadinejad hasn't made many friends in Parliament. His extreme verbal aggression towards Israel and the West are the main reasons why he has become increasingly isolated. Rumours are even circulating about a power struggle within the Conservatives. The direction taken by Ahmadinejad also seems unclear to other politicians. Where is he taking the country? Those in favour of reform distance themselves from him as much as possible. Like many other presidents, Ahmadinejad follows ideas that are diametrically opposed to those of the people. We, all those who want reform, are against the confrontational approach of the president, and I am under the impression that the conservatives also disapprove. As the revolution started, we were united as a people. Now we are divided. <laughs> Those somewhat better off materially have other concerns. The threatening return to the ideals of the Islamic revolution could put an end to their modest freedoms. Rules and taboos belong to the urban middle class's everyday life. Breaking them is a mass phenomenon. The government's foreign and interior politics have by now become a source of a great irritation. We are worried not just me, everyone. We have to act with caution and we are afraid that someone could attack us. This is a very unstable situation. No one seems to know a way out. Over the past few months, both here in Isfahan and in the entire country, people have grown more apprehensive. They are afraid that this fanatical president could force them under an Islamic dictatorship with an iron fist. Many wonder why Iranians have to suffer so much in a country benefiting from natural resources in plenty and a rich cultural past. What has become of Iran? We Iranians don't confide in one another easily, but I can see that everyone shares the same boat. What will happen to us? Will Ahmadinejad finally do something for us? Will he keep his promises? Where is he really leading our country? Thank you.